Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on where you're at, uh, it is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Thursday, December 14th, 2023. It's about 11.57 a.m. Uh, just a short time ago, we had some uh, interesting activity here on the western limb of the sun. It is the largest solar flare in the solar cycle 25 so far in X2.8. Now this X2.8 that struck this morning is the largest since about 2017 when we had an X8.2 flare occur. Look at that backward numbers there. Kind of crazy. But uh, either way, this thing kicking up here just a short time ago. Uh, a current look at the uh, flare detection chart shows this very large X flare coming in again just a, a couple hours or so ago. We're starting to come back down from that. We did see another M flare peak up here. You can just see a little spike on this chart. Uh, it looks as though maybe there was some type of fast eruptive CME associated with this event. Um, not for sure, though, if it's going to be Earth directed or not due to the position uh, of that sunspot, which is coming off of. And this is the one I've said to watch here. Uh, 3514. Beautiful. Uh, it did peak out a, a large M flare last night. Uh, did cover that on my last update video in m5.8 i believe it was right here uh, and it did peak uh looks like overnight uh, another m2.3 and then the x2.8 just a short time ago what a what a beautiful image here absolutely stunning and uh at least we got to see it right it was on the earth facing side here of the sun uh, but again uncertain on if this thing produced an eruptive cme we'll watch the uh, space weather prediction center here see if they put out forecasts either way we're still uh, coming back down from a radio blackout here now these radio blackouts uh, can definitely affect the sunlit side of the earth uh, it can lead to basically um, degraded uh, degraded activity or complete loss of high frequency radio signals uh, and that was centered uh, a little bit more over towards the south america region uh, a couple hours ago but goodness uh, I still think we got the potential to see some further flaring. And it's coming off of 3514 uh, here. This one, I'm not for sure why this is in black and white. It looks a little weird. Uh, but one of the latest imagery models here show the magnetic features at the Sunspots Harbor. And this is 3514 here. Really getting complex and mixed up. Uh, and that's why we're seeing this elevated, stronger flare activity. This has been the region that has been growing here the past couple days. And man, it looks like it has grown overnight and very complex. I do think we have some potential to see some further flaring uh, from that sunspot region. Now, right now, this model only showing 80% chance for C flare, M flare at 30, X flare around 5% chance. But uh, it, still, it still looks like it wants to peak up a little bit here. We're getting some more M flare activity following that large X flare, X 2.8, the struck. Uh, just a short time ago, we'll continue to watch that. All right, uh, earthquake activity, see what's going on here across the globe. Latest movement, uh, let's see what we got for the largest earthquake overnight. Uh, looks like a 5.5 earthquake in the southern east Pacific rise here. Been getting a little bit of, uh, a little bit of earthquake activity happening down south uh, of the equator area on the southern hemisphere of the earth did see a 5.4 in the south sandwich islands region as well uh, aside from that uh, looks like some movement occurring over here in the middle america trench they did see a 5.4 as well but nothing above that that uh, 6.0 level uh, let's take a look at the west coast region see if we got anything major going on out here doesn't look like it no major huge storms going on or, or uh, uh, earthquake swarms <laughs> I got storms on my mind because we have a, a lot of rainfall heading this way. A uh, little bit of movement here on the Brawley Seismic Zone. Not really calling that a swarm. Uh, three earthquakes I don't think really classify as a swarm of quakes. But uh, still, uh, continue to watch Southern California. It has been somewhat elevated over the last few days. Uh, up north, getting a handful of earthquakes here south of the bay. There's one lonesome earthquake from last night. That's in the Gorda Ridges. And... Uh, Looks like just a typical day out here. I'm not really seeing anything abnormal going on. The Western Pacific here looks pretty quiet. 
Um, let's look on the Earthquake 3D globe, see what we have. Uh, we got one 5.6 here around the Mor uh, Mariana Islands, pretty shallow. Uh, USGS not picking up on that earthquake yet, but uh, it's there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Or, yeah, Earthquake 3D globe here from the EMSC. Um, technically, it looks awfully quiet across this region, aside from the typical movement in the in Indonesia Islands area. Uh, down here in New Zealand uh, and northward, looks fairly quiet as well. They did see a 3.8, but overall, look at that. There's there's a huge gap of lacking activity within this region uh, around the Mediterranean area getting a handful of earthquakes as well uh, further movement it looks like north of Iceland let me give a quick glance here at the Iceland uh, Met office see what we have far as any updates if they put out any updates today uh, the last one was put out uh, yesterday um, they mention about the uh, Savart Singi area continuing to inflate with magma underneath the subsurface area. Um, an eruption remains possible, but uh, I, I don't think, you know, I, I really don't think that we're going to see it um, unless we see a further influx, a huge influx of magma from below. Uh, and it could be, um, could be out here. Look at this earthquake activity occurring. Um, quite a few threes out here, it looks like stirring up well southwest of Iceland that's some very new activity it does sit of course on that rift zone out here as well just off the rift zone the Grindavik area uh, where the uh, concern has been around this town uh, showing a little bit of activity overnight and in, in the uh, very small earthquake department microquake activity here uh, but no new changes to report there across uh, the area aside from oh well, aside from that newer stuff out here I mean that's kind of interesting continue to watch that see if anything changes out there the big island of hawaii still seeing earthquake activity i don't think we've seen eruption overnight let's go double check the uh latest information statement here from the hvo the hawaii volcano observatory this update was put out today and the volcano is currently not erupting same stuff activity has been focused in a couple different earthquake clusters south and southeast of the volcano summit caldera and uh, most of these earthquakes are very small, uh, but still, it's obvious sign of magma uh, forcing its way uh, towards the surface area or potentially uh, volcanic gases down there building up as well. A look at the tilt meter. Let's see if I can bring in the correct tilt meter here. UWE. Ooh, seen a sharp decline event right here overnight, looks like. Choo, right there. This is the last two days of activity. Still elevated, though. This is the last 30 days. Uh, we're still at the highest level seen at the Kilauea Volcano since 2018 when they had that eruption pop uh, east over here across the area. So continue to watch that and uh, report back on any major changes. Storm Prediction Center here. Not a whole lot of severe weather. That's good news. Day 3 outlook looks like mainly around Florida. A little marginal risk for some severe weather. Numerical models, a real quick glance here. Those getting excited about precipitation out here along the West Coast. We need it. Uh, still holding true. I want to show you guys these uh, this run here of accumulated precipitation. Look at these storms coming into the West Coast. I know Florida down here and the Gulf Coast states and the eastern seaboard are getting some precipitation. But this is kind of a big deal out here in California. Looks like that weather pattern could remain through the end of the year. Uh, as we head into 2024, look at some of those impressive rainfall rates there. Maybe uh, up around 9, 10 inches of rainfall down in the Sacramento Valley here around Chico. We could be getting up there around 6 to 7 inches as well. And that is after the series of storms that are heading this way. Uh, we'll continue to watch that. There could be a little bit of concern here for some flooding potential out here in Northern California. All right, folks, have yourself a good day. Again, keep your eyes on the sky. And it uh, looks like the sun right now definitely wants to uh, remain active. That was quite the flare that kicked off here just a short time ago. And uh, maybe that's why I'm feeling a little bit energetic right now. Feeling super, um, I don't know what the word is, but uh, definitely feel energized. We'll catch you guys back here later on this evening for a complete update. Take care, folks. Have a good day.